Hi. Uh, in this video, I borrow a lecture slide from Roger Quenker's quantile regression lecture slide. Uh, it's a nice introduction. Of course, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more theoretical and mathematical. We are not covering all of these theoretical properties, but I would like to use its uh, the, the, the examples in this slide. So maybe you can download it online. You can just search it, search for it. And let me go to the example. So above this, there are like theories. You may read it, you may study this, that's also nice. But let me go directly to uh, the example. So these are typical examples. I have give, I have given you more examples, but I did not. I don't know. I'm not a. I, I'm not an expert in that empirical analysis. I just give you just a scenario, imaginary scenario where quantile regressions would be good. But I have not used the data. So this is an actual existing uh, empirical studies using quantile regressions. First example is angle curve. Angle curve is the ratio between household income and food expenditure. So in general, we know it is not linear. So even if house, household income increases, you cannot, you cannot increase the food expenditure proportionally. Even if I become, say, say suppose that Bill Gates is 1 million times more rich, uh, richer than me, still he would not consume 1 million times more than me. So he cannot eat 1 million times more than I do. Maybe it should be similar, it would be similar. So food expenditure does not increase proportionally to the income. Uh, so it, we expect it's a little bit more non-parametric non and non-linear. But at the same time, still it's strange. It's also po what's possible is, it is possible maybe Bill Gates may hire a uh, professional cook, professional chef, and um, have him cook for him, like cook only for Bill Gates, or while I cook with or cook uh, ramen, maybe Bill Gates can, can like plant wheat and own a, buy a farm and make noodle and make the best uh, noodle in the world and have it maybe, which may cost 1 million times more than me. So anyhow, what, I'm, what I wanted to say here is, when your household income is low, there is no choice. Your ex food expenditure does not make much difference. It's not that different. You have no choice but like McDonald's uh, at this point. But when you become richer, you have choice. If you are not a gourmet, then you may just like, this guy has enough income, but uh, does not enjoy eating maybe I guess or some reason why not he, he's small eater but still at the same time on the other hand at this income you may enjoy more if you are a gourmet then your your observation is here so if I'm willing then if I if I am very sensitive to my eating uh, the taste then I will spend uh, like much more money on on food uh, so the heterogeneity increases. So that's another concern. So it, in general, it, there, is, there are two problems. First, it's nonlinear. It's not proportional. It's nonlinear. And second, the heterogeneity increases as income increases. So when you are poor, you cannot be a gourmet. You, you have no choice. You have no choice on uh, food. You just have to choose the cheapest one. But when you when you get a little bit rich, then you may choose organic food uh, or not. It depends. Uh, and when you become super rich, then you may hire a professional chef. Anyhow, it shows uh, uh, the the difference. And here in this example, the mean regression is red. Red is the mean regression, and blue is blue is the the median regression. And what you can see here is the top, like say 95 percentile and 90 percentile has small difference. Uh, on the top, there are those difference is small, but on the bottom, there is a huge, like greater difference. That means it is hard to increase to the top. 
So even if you want to spend more, it's hard, it's difficult. So 90% and 95% have little difference. But if you don't want to spend that much, then it is easy to reduce food expenditure. So it goes below, like difference between 5%, 10% is greater here compared to the top difference. So the distribution is skewed to, uh, to the bottom, to the left, negatively skewed. That's the meaning of this quantile regression. Uh, here, what's the difference? So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's the difference. I have no idea what's the difference. Anyhow, we have seen maybe it focuses on this area. On on I guess it it looks at this area only. Uh, household income below one thousand. So then still the pattern is similar. Ninety percent, ninety five percent is small, close, but five percent, ten percent are a little bit more far from each other. So it's nice. And this is another example, model of infant birth weight. It's, uh, so the outcome, the Y variable is infant birth weight in grams. In this literature, in this literature, in infant birth weight is uh, an important measure of infant health. So especially if infant is, in the birth weight is below 2.5 kilograms, uh, it's a huge problem. The infant may may need to uh, may need extra care, like uh, what what do we call that? I I I, f I forgot the name. Anyhow, some like so and need extra care. So, uh, like many many researchers try to find the uh, uh, determinant of low birth weight, or what what causes low birth weight. But another problem here is that it does so the 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 the, the threshold is two point five kilograms. If your baby is three kilograms, oh, that's okay. If your baby is four kilograms, that's also okay. The difference between three kilograms and four kilograms is not significant. We don't care. So anyhow, the the baby is healthy enough, so there is no need for extra care. But so the one kilogram difference at that point is ignorable, does not care, I don't care. But one kilogram difference, see, like two kilogram and 2.5 kilogram is a huge difference. 2.5 kilogram is still too small but on the, on the border, but two kilogram is too small. It's, a, it's dangerous, I, I don't know medically, but would be more dangerous and need extra care for a longer time. So in this example, we are particularly interested in, in the lower quantiles and we would like to find which variable affects lower quantile uh, of the birth weight distribution. So let's see. And this is the result. What's interesting here is we consider a quantile from zero to one. So for example, let's think about this. This is intercept intercept so and the and say red red thick line is mean regression result and the band around the red is the confidence interval from the mean regression <coughs> excuse me so mean regression and confidence interval and blue is quantile regression and of course the band is the confidence interval from quantile regressions and what you can see here is, of course, the mean regression does not depend on quantile. So quantile ranges from zero to one. Mean regression does not depend on that. So it's flat, always flat in every uh, result. And quantile regression uh, may differ across different quantiles. So in this example, uh, the intercept, everything else being zero, the intercept at like maybe starting point is one percentile or so. One percentile goes to uh, 2.5 kilogram. It is gram, so about 2.5 kilogram, and it increases uh, nicely to 
about four kilogram, a little higher than four kilograms. So it's a nice, nice, beautiful curve. So as expected, the, the, the mean is around the median. Mean and median is similar. Uh, so they are similar because the curve is symmetric and nice. But let's, let's think about mother's age. So mother's age, this is, so this is the coefficient of mother's age. Usually the mother's age as mother's age increases by one unit, by one unit, the, the baby's, baby's weight increases like this much, 35, uh, ah, here is, excuse me. So let's think about this first. It's mother's age squared. So uh, mother's age is fitted in a quadratic function, functional form, included mother's age and age squared. So let's look at this. So in the mean regression, the coefficient of mother's age squared is estimated to be around minus 5.7 or like six or so, 5.5. Anyhow, the minus 0.55, for example, and this is the standard uh, confidence interval. So here it's it's clear there is a it's a negative impact, but 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 if you study the quantile regression, the mean regression is misleading. It it can be dangerous because you you can find much more than the mean regression because. On average, say the effect is minus 0.55, but actually from 0.2 or for 80% of people, say from 0.2, 20 to 20% to 10%, I, 20% to 100%, the effect is small, uh, smaller than the mean. So effect is around point, minus 0.5. Okay, that's, uh, that's somewhere here. But the problem is as the quantile goes down, goes below 20%, then suddenly it matters a lot. So that means mother's age matters is an important determinant of low birth weight. So mother's age matters in this range, not in general. So if the baby is healthy, mother's age is not a important uh, problem. It's not a big problem, but for low birth weight, it is a problem. It becomes an important determinant at the lower quantile. So have to be careful uh, in the interpretation. So mean regression does not say uh, much, but it, if you look at the distribution, how they are di distributed, it may be uh, different. It may be different. And let's think about this. Also, a similar, similar thing can be find, found here. What it, what it is, it, it, it is uh, no prenatal care. So prenatal care is the doctor visit before, uh, during the pregnancy. Um, so it is a dummy variable. It takes one if the mother did not see a doctor during the pregnancy. So in general, so the mean regression says if you don't see a doctor, the effect is on average minus say say 200 grams. Simply say 200 grams if you do not see a doctor during the pregnancy. But that's the average, that's the average. But in fact, the distribution is very much skewed. Very much skewed. So again, 20% to, to 100% have uh, less than minus 200, uh, 200 gram effect. So they are, they have negative impact, but it maybe is, it's smaller. The problem is on the lower quantile, it could be huge. The impact could be much, much bigger. So, and it's intuitive. If the baby is healthy, then they don't need to see the doctor. It's, it, the doctor cannot, there's nothing. So I, I, I remember when my wife was pregnant, we, we saw a doctor. But it's just checkup. So if there is no problem, then the doctor just says there is no problem. Let's see in two weeks in, in something like that. But if, so we see a doctor uh, just to check if there is any problem. If there was a problem in the lower quantile, then it's a big, bigger problem. It becomes a bigger problem. If there is no problem, then it, there is no problem. So, so this is, uh, this is 
what we can learn from quantile regression. So, and also, um, also mother's weight gain, similar weight gain, mother's weight increase is too small, then there is a huge negative impact. And cigarette, what's interesting here is smoker, on the other hand, smoking is rather flat. There is no skewness like this. So we have maybe, maybe I would expect smoking among, among these variables, among these variables, I would expect smoking would be an important uh, factor on low, low birth weight. But what it says is, yeah, it is negative impact. It's around minus 100 something, minus seven, minus, minus 170 grams. But uh, there is no uh, skewness, like all the quantiles are kind, kind of flat, uh, uniformly distributed. And number of, number of cigarettes per day, even if you are a heavy smoker still, the effect is like, it's a problem here. It drops a lot, but not as much as this. So compare the confidence interval. Confidence interval is wide. It just drops slightly below the confidence interval. But com com considering this, it's like it drops like maybe 10 sigma, 10 standard errors below the mean, ever, mean regression. So smoking is a problem, but it's not, a, not specific to low birth weight. S smoking is problem to every mother, but these weight gain and prenatal care and like mother's age are especially, and black, black and married, some variables are specific to low birth weight problems. So these kind of things are uh, what we can see from the quantile regression. And uh, in, in these graphs, it captures coefficient of squared and linear term. But if you use, if you combine them to calculate marginal effect, so then it says it's combining mother's weight gain and weight gain squared to have uh, the slope, to calculate the slope then as you can see, weight gain, weight gain is also very much skewed. Weight gain effect is very much skewed here. And also, uh, what's the difference? And mother's age uh, has, it like drops here. Excuse me, oh, what's the difference? I don't see how these four graphs differ. Anyhow, that's, that's that. And here, this is another example where uh, forecasting of daily temperature in Melbourne uh, is quantile regression. So if, it, if yesterday was cold, then today would be cold, but the correlation could be different across different quantiles. So, so at different levels of temperature, the distribution of the tomorrows, uh, tomorrow's distribution is quite different. So quantile regression can capture this. And these are, uh, okay, these are examples, more actual examples, uh, practical examples. So uh, I will finish the video here and we will start a more theoretical, theoretical uh, topics in the next video.